All right, let's talk about producers and consumers getting into the, the basics of ecology. Primary producers, where everything begins. Well, no organism on Earth can create its own energy, and all organisms need energy. If there's no energy, then li there's no life function whatsoever. Now, you might be saying, well, plants create their own, their own energy. Not necessarily. They're transforming energy. Now, we get energy from the plants and animals we eat, but where do the plants and animals that we eat, where do they get their energy from? It has to come from somewhere, and it comes from the sun. The ultimate energy source is the sun. Now, there's new evidence, and science is always changing, and there's new evidence that suggests that some organisms can get energy from inorganic compounds, and that's relatively new. Now, some organisms, like plants, algae, and some bacteria, are considered autotrophs. Now, autotrophs means they capture the sun's energy, and the sun's energy being the light, and produce their own quote-unquote food. This is where the plants get their energy from. So they get the energy from the sun and transform that energy to produce their own energy. Now, they don't only produce food, but they also store energy in forms that make it available to other organisms who eat the autotroph. So autotrophs are any, pretty much any plants that do photosynthesis. And it doesn't just have to be photosynthesis. There's other, other kinds too, like chemosynthesis, which we'll talk about in a few minutes. But they make it available to other organisms who eat the autotroph. Now autotrophs are considered primary producers. They're the first producers of energy-rich compounds that are later used by other organisms in the food chain and or food web. Now, primary producers are essential to the flow of energy through our biosphere. Now, energy from the sun and energy without light. Primary producers, those autotrophs that we talked about, they harness solar energy through the process of photosynthesis. Now, photosynthesis should not be a new term. Photosynthesis means it captures the solar energy, that's the sun's energy, and converts carbon dioxide and water into oxygen and energy-rich compounds such as sugar and starches. Now, autotrophs add oxygen to the atmosphere and remove carbon dioxide. People keep talking about how we're going to get this carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere. Well, the more plants you have, the more autotrophs that use photosynthesis, the easier it's going to be to remove some of that carbon dioxide. Now, without the autotrophs, there wouldn't be enough air on Earth to breathe. A lot of people think that, you know, the trees and the vegetation, everything here on Earth, that they rely on us. It's actually the other way around. We rely on them. Now, let's talk about energy without light. So this all has to do with energy with light. Let's talk about where does energy come from without light. Now, some primary producers do not use photosynthesis, but chemosynthesis. Now, this is chemical energy, which is why it's called chemosynthesis. All right, chemo, chemical. So it's chemical energy. And what that means is like hydrogen sulfide from volcanic vents, you know, deep down in the ocean. It's used to produce carbohydrates. So this hydrogen sulfide that some primary producers use, they use it to produce carbohydrates. And carbohydrates being those starches and sugar that make all the uh, energy. Now, organisms that use chemosynthesis for energy can be found in a wide variety of places in the biosphere. It's not like you're only going to find them one or two places. You're going to find them all over the place. They can be found in volcanic vents, hot springs, and tidal marshes along the coast. Now, these are just some of the places they can be found, but they're all over the place. All right, let's take a look at this. So, an odd trough, I mean, we've all seen green vegetation, hopefully, unless you're living in, you know, the remote you know, places of Greenland or, you know, the remote places of Russia where it's, you know, snowing all the time. But most of us have seen green vegetation. Now, here are some um, chemosynthesis, some um, autotrophs that use chemosynthesis. And we have this weird little U-shaped thing here, and that's nanometers. These things are 2.4 nanometers in length. And they use hydrogen sulfide to produce carbohydrates to get their energy. And these are some of the volcanic vents. This is from the University of Washington. You can see the volcanic vents, all that ash spewing out. 
Well, they're going to grab that hydrogen sulfide and make their own energy. All right, last slide. Let's talk about consumers. Well, what about organisms like animals and fungi that can't harness the power of the sun and do photosynthesis? Well, we can't do that. We can't use photosynthesis. You know, there's other fungi. They can't use photosynthesis. So where do they get their energy from? These organisms are called heterotrophs. It means they must acquire energy from other organisms by ingesting them. And when we say ingesting them, we mean eating them. Now, heterotrophs are known as consumers, so they're pretty much one and the same. They're organisms that rely on other organisms for energies. So when we're talking about heterotrophs, we're talking about consumers, people or uh, organisms that rely on other organisms for energy. All right. Now, there are different types of consumers, and this might make it a little easier for you to understand what a consumer is. Carnivores, they kill and eat other animals. They don't eat vegetables, they just kill and eat other animals. Then you have the herbivores. All right, they obtain energy from eating plants. These are the vegetarians. Now, you might be saying, are there any animals that eat meat and plants? Yes, and that's what we call the omnivores. They obtain energy from plants and animals. So they don't just eat animals. They also eat plants. They don't just eat plants. They also eat animals. It's a combination of the carnivore and herbivore. And then we have scavengers. Now scavengers do not confuse with a carnivore. Because scavengers consume the carcass of dead animals. So yes, they eat animals, but only the dead animals. And then we have the decomposers. They quote unquote feed by chemically breaking down organic matter. So those are the types of consumers. And with that, that's all there is for producers and consumers.